When I hear people say Makoto Shinkai is a one-trick pony who can only write about the human connection, I have two things to say to that. First, objectively, yeah, you're right. Every feature-length film I've seen so far from him, especially up to this point, explores this theme, which leads me to my second response, and it's while, again, he does normally make films around the topic of not only connection, but also distance as well, you gotta admit, it's a damn good trick. In one way after another, he has been able to answer the question of what will happen when two people meet in a public setting fairly consistently. Add in the beautiful visuals and music, and you got yourself a world-famous Shinkai film. But what if he approached this question a little differently? Instead of having a boy and a girl meet in a place like uh, a train, or in a restaurant, where they all know in the beginning is at best what their names are and what they do for a living, what about two private people who talk to each other in a secluded place for a long time without knowing each other's names or what they do, but instead all they knew were what the other was doing at that moment in time and what their quirks were? Sound familiar? Should be. Let's elaborate on that. You're in the latest edition of the Makoto Shinkai Project, Episode 6, The Garden of Words. This 46-minute short film follows a 15-year-old amateur shoemaker named Takao who often goes to Shinjuku Gyoen National Garden, not only to practice his shoemaking, but to also get away from his dysfunctional family while at the same time skipping class. On one rainy day when he visits the park, he meets a 27-year-old woman named Yukino, whom he sees drinking beer and eating large amounts of chocolate, who is later revealed to be avoiding work due to personal issues. After a nice conversation on their first day, they make it a tradition where they would meet at the park on every rainy day going forward. But when Takao found out where Yukino works at, and they both find out more about each other, not only do they grow closer together, but they start to realize that through their interactions, they were teaching each other how to walk again. For anyone who isn't familiar with either Shinkai's films, or how he makes them, what's his process, one thing he does which results in his amazing backdrops and attention to detail in the past was take photographs and use them either as a base or a reference point for a similar setting in any of his films. In The Garden of Words, the first thing he thought of when it came to how the film was going to look was the scenery of Tokyo he sees every day. So when production began in the spring of 2012, Shinkai had taken thousands of photos of basically his backyard, primarily in Shinjuku Gyoen National Garden where the film is primarily set. Production for the film took six months, and while a large number of pictures were used, they only made up for half the film, while the other half of the movie was either hand-drawn or made in Adobe Photoshop. As for the characters in the movie, Shinkai had a new character designer in his staff, Kenichi Tsuchiya, that would change the way his films look visually going forward as Shinkai's previous character designs would look rough and would be one of a couple of things I wouldn't be a fan of when I reviewed his previous work, but it looks like going forward I wouldn't have to worry about that, as Tsuchiya also worked on the character design for Shinkai's next film, Your Name, and while he didn't do the character design for his latest film, Weathering With You, it doesn't mean that Shinkai's old designs came back into fruition after he left. Shinkai believes that the Garden of Words stands out from anything else out there in the anime medium because of a new method that he started trying out where the lighting that you would see cut through the clouds after the rain had stopped would look on someone's skin, which was accompanied by a toned down color palette and pale green shading that was used for the rainy scenes in particular, thereby increasing the attention to detail in both the setting and the characters. This was accomplished by outlining the characters and then incorporating the background color onto the surface through, again, Adobe Photoshop, which would make sense because Shinkai not only wrote and direct the film, he also went back into his DIY mode a little bit and also did the storyboards, color design, he did the key animation, and he edited the film. This is also one of the few things Shinkai did differently that made this film unique, which we'll get to later in the video. When he made this film, he initially wanted it to be seen not in theaters, but online, as his intention was for people to enjoy it the same way they would listen to music. But even though Shinkai didn't fully achieve this goal, he was still satisfied by the end result as it would be first premiered at AX 2013, it would be released on iTunes the same day the film came out in Japan, 
where it would end up being one of the top releases of 2013 and it was already out on DVD and Blu-ray before the film was done premiering in theaters on June 21st. And right now, if you live in the United States, the movie's on Netflix. You can go watch this right now. The film was also followed by a 7 minute short film also directed by Shinkai titled Dadaka no Manazashi, which is about a young woman and her ever changing relationship with her father as she grows older. As a standalone short film, this hit me pretty hard, and it's hard to believe that it only took 7 minutes to say a story like this. Another example of why this guy is an incredible talent. So yeah, just for shits and giggles, I'm going to give Dadako no Manazashi a watch it out of 10. After The Garden of Words came out, Shinkai wrote a manga that came out in November of 2013, and a light novel that came out almost a year later in April 2014. And just when he thought the adaptations were done, back in October, it was announced there's going to be a stage play adaptation done by a group known as Whole Hog Theater, the same people who pulled off a very similar stage play adaptation of Princess Mononoke. Another thing that makes this film exclusive in Shinkai's filmography up to this point is the number of metaphors and motifs he puts into his film, the biggest one being of rain. While it means something completely different in today's world with all that climate change shit, in the world of eight years ago when he thought up the story 2012-2013, he saw rain as a way to not only make the world around Takao and Yukino look more eloquent, but also act as a little bubble that separates them both between their lives and limitations, it separates them between them and reality, as well as the very common similarity between love and rain because neither of them can't be stopped. The other main motif is the shoes that Takao is making as his process accurately represents their relationship. Not fully confident and in some cases very seclusive. But when Yukino said that she's been learning to walk again for a while, that's when the shoes also represent how these two social outcasts learn to live with not only what they have with each other, but also what they got to begin with. Shinkai knew that shoemaking would be critical in how the story would turn out, so in order to be more realistic with the craft, he researched a lot about the process, worked with a stylist, and even had his staff at Comics Wave Films take weekly fashion meetings so even they knew how the process went down. Now, at the beginning of the video, I talked about how Shinkai approached the topic of a confidential human connection, which can be an engaging path to go down if you just want to find some diversity in the one thing you want to talk about. But Shinkai had a plan for how to go with it, which is another big reason, apart from the animation, why many people said at the time this was Shinkai's best film. In Japanese society, almost everyone in the country is given a set of social expectations. Go to school, go to work, help the country out in any way you can, and we expect nothing different. And it's this way of living that is actually credited to the huge population decline in Japan. In the movie, the story is about a student who makes a pair of shoes for a woman who experiences physical anxiety when living a normal life in the public realm. In Asian culture, you take your shoes off when entering a home, a private space. So shoes are definitely a tool used when individuals enter a public space, where, especially in Japan, there are strong expectations to conform to. Within what we know now, The Garden of Words is about an adult who is struggling in society, meeting an outcast with the same number of social issues, and in the end, Takao heals both of their problems with a pair of new shoes that not only helps Yukino walk again through life, but throughout the process, he learns how to walk again himself. Takao's rant at the end of the film adds to the notion that certain societal standards were broken between both of them as he yells at her about the fact that if they knew more about each other earlier in the film, their encounter would have turned out different. Personally, I like this route because of the chemistry these two have, how they act, what they say to each other, and how it's nothing different from something that we see every day when we go to places like Twitter, Instagram, Discord social media in general because when you make an account you can be whoever you want and you can reveal whatever you want to other people obviously i can't say i've done this but i've seen so many people on social media who don't show their name anywhere they don't say where they work and they post whatever they want to whoever they want and it kind of makes sense why shinkai went this route because he basically uses twitter every day and it's the best thing ever sometimes when the film was made 
Shinkai said he intended it to be for people who are suffering through loneliness or feel socially incomplete. But just like the last time he tackled something like this, the movie doesn't treat loneliness as something that must be fixed, as it's also intended as a coping mechanism for anyone coming off of a relationship or anything that really impacted whoever was watching it in any way that would lead them to not talk to people that much, and Shinkai showed this in how he wrote the characters. Instead of having a bulk of the film have introspective monologues from both the two main cast, Shinkai went with a less is more approach by only limiting it to normal conversation, which not only creates a somewhat somber and elegaic atmosphere sometimes, but it also puts the audience in the minds of our main cast as it prevents them from keeping track about how Takao and Yukino feel about each other, and when he does use their inner monologues and thought expositions so we can understand them, he dials it back a noticeable amount compared to his other films, making their interactions feel more realistic, letting the audience insert themselves into the world sitting alongside them because you know the same amount of information that the characters do. Takao and Yukino do a great job of playing off of each other, Takao being characterized very well as his dreams of adulthood were embodied by Yukino, but it almost didn't turn out that way. When Shinkai wrote the original script, his staff told him that Yukino came off as selfish, and when he got this information, he gave her nervous traits and flaws which, according to him, after putting it in the script, reminded him of a former girlfriend that he had, the same one that he created his first short film for, She and Her Cat. In terms of what I can think about the animation, it's gorgeous as usual. The well-angled panorama shots showing either the city landscape or the park is breathtaking. The depth of field effect was outstanding and wasn't used to the point where it was distracting. While he didn't use the lighting as much this time to tell the story, the cinematography was excellent in doing so as it had a clever use of deep focus that showed the metaphors more clearly. For God's sakes, there was multiple shots of the park where it looked like a live action shot instead of it being in an animated film. I mean, Jesus Christ, the first shot looks like someone just took a camera and recorded a hanging branch above a lake. This may not be Shinkai's best film, but it's definitely his most visually stunning by a long shot. For the first time in Shinkai's career, Tenmon isn't doing the music, but instead, the soundtrack was composed by Daisuke Kashiwa, who comes in with a number of piano pieces, while the movie also has a number of ambient noises which is used to its advantage. Kashiwa got the job after sending Shinkai a number of his albums and got the thumbs up from him after he started listening to said albums while he was writing the screenplay, and said that he wanted the soundtrack made similar to Kashiwa's 2011 album, 88. I'm gonna link not only the Garden of Words soundtrack, but also 88 for anyone who wants to take a listen, anyone who's curious. The theme song Rain, just like the theme song to 5 centimeters per second, is a song that was re-recorded for the film, as Shinkai used to listen to the song in college and thought that it fit very well with the story. Overall, this is more than just a romance story about the desires and passion we hold all the time within a modern day social context. The Garden of Words is a drama film that adopts a more authentic approach to human relationships in this day and age, while also taking advantage of the anime medium as a whole in the best way possible in under an hour. Mikoto Shinkai was able to show the viewer that the road to getting to know someone in a private sphere is rocky at times, as he shows some distance between Takao and Yukino, but in the end, he shows that it'll all be worth it. Even if the runtime is shorter than the normal romance film, and in some cases, shorter than it needed to be, the presentation is a can't-miss factor, how Shinkai breaks away from his old motifs brings something new to the table, and how he breaks new ground by tackling a story few filmmakers have even tried, even in Japan, is unavoidable, and makes this movie experimental in a way. And with that, I'm going to give the first installment of the Makoto Shinkai Cinematic Universe a 9 out of 10. Thank you guys for watching the latest edition of the Makoto Shinkai Project and the first video of 2020. Very exciting uh, to have the first video be this. If you like this movie, if you like this video, hit the like button down below. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, hit the subscribe button either on the screen or down under the video. If you want to see any videos that I've made in the past, same thing, videos on the screen, video down on the channel. And with that, my name is Payne, here for the first video of 2020. 
And I'll see you in the next one. See you guys.